replacing the air filter. Using the Phillips screwdriver, we remove the filter cover screw and filter cover. By hand, remove the filter from the upper housing's filter cavity. By hand, clean the filter cover and the upper housing's filter cavity. By hand, assemble the new filter to the upper housing. Using the Phillips screwdriver, reinstall the screw and filter cover. Replacing the pumping chamber blocks. Using the eight millimeter socket, remove the upper housings four screws. Using the slotted screwdriver, gently pry the upper housing from the base by inserting the blade between the upper housing and the base's pressure port. By hand, remove the upper housing and sound absorber. Heat discoloration on the sound absorber is normal. By hand, Disconnect the rubber tubes from the pumping chamber blocks. Using the Phillips screwdriver, remove the screws from the pumping chamber blocks, eight total with four per chamber block. By hand, remove the head blocks. The head block is the outer part the pumping chamber block. Using the seven millimeter socket, remove the retaining nut and washer from only one diaphragm block and remove the diaphragm block. The diaphragm block is the inner part of the pumping chamber block. By hand, remove the remaining diaphragm block and rod block assembly from the motor. Do not damage the rod block at any time during this procedure. Tabs on the top of the rod block must clear the safety switch mechanism. Using the 7 millimeter socket, remove the remaining retaining nut and washer. By hand, remove the remaining diaphragm block from the rod block. By hand, clean any safety screw or other debris from the motor. We designed the safety screws to protect the motor. The safety screws break and kill power to the motor when you need to replace the diaphragms. By hand, Remove and discard all broken safety screw and nut pieces. Using the 7 millimeter socket, assemble a new diaphragm block to the rod block with a new retaining nut and washer. During this step, ensure the rod block properly aligns with the diaphragm block's keyway. And the lock nut's crown faces away from the diaphragm. By hand, 
reinstall the diaphragm block and rod block assembly into the motor. During this step, ensure the diaphragm block's air intake hole aligns with the relief in the motor frame. Tabs on the top of the rod block must clear the safety switch mechanism. Using the 7mm socket, assemble the remaining new diaphragm block to the rod block using a new nut and washer. During this step, again ensure the rod block aligns with the diaphragm block's keyway. The nut's crown faces away from the diaphragm. The diaphragm block's air intake hole aligns with the relief in the motor frame. Using the Phillips screwdriver, assemble the new head blocks with the chamber block screws. Ensure the head block keyways align with the diaphragm blocks. By hand, reinstall the rubber tubes to the new chamber blocks. Then reinstall the sound absorber. Installing the new safety screw and nut. By hand, insert the new safety screw into the switch assembly. Using the 5.5 mm socket and the slotted screwdriver, fully secure the safety screw nut to the screw. The screw has a design feature that prevents over tightening the nut. Place the upper housing back into place on the pump base then reinstall the upper housing screws. Using the 8mm socket, if you are using a power driver to install the screws, then we recommend you first engage the screw threads into the base by hand to reduce the likelihood of cross-threading. 